Hello and welcome back. Constructing a new study from the ground up can be a daunting task and it can truly be hard to figure out where to even start in this process. Now, if you've watched our alignment video or have learned about study alignment in your thesis or dissertation preparation courses, then you can probably see now that all the core pieces of your study have to fit together. But where does it make sense to start on all of this? You might have a certain research question that you want to ask, but how do you know that there is a legitimate need to ask these questions in your graduate research? To clarify these points, what I'll explain to you in this instructional video is how the topic development process works. Now, this is your very first step that will set you on the path to conducting a well-designed study. It will be one that you can solidly justify as being necessary and important to develop knowledge or understanding in your field of research. We're called upon to assist quite often to help topic development for our clients' dissertations and thesis research, so we know just what we're doing in this area. This video should help to clarify this major step of your study development greatly. So to start off our discussion of topic development, let's begin with one of the most basic of questions. How do you identify a topic? Well, identifying a topic that you can justify is just as important to shape your dissertation around something that isn't just a simple matter. It's not enough to simply state that you are curious about the topic or that you think investigating the topic might lead to interesting or helpful results. For a successful study, your research topic needs to be three things. Clear, contemporary and compelling. Demonstrating that your topic has these three essential qualities involves careful development of a research gap. This is the first goal of topic development and one of the main reasons researchers seek out dissertation help. The research gap is a term that refers to something that is currently unknown within your discipline, which you must be able to demonstrate through a detailed presentation of the related research literature. Right, now let's talk specifically about these three qualities. The first requirement of your topic is that it reflects a clearly stated gap in the literature. Clear here has two meanings. First, it means that the language of the research gap must be precise. It's important to note that this doesn't mean you should load up on jargon. Instead, you should use key terms as appropriate to provide context for your reader. Second, it means that the gap must, in terms of content, be specific. Another good word for this is narrow. This means that you have discovered and described a particular area of knowledge that is fairly limited in scope. It is one that invites a very specific type of study to get at the information that is as yet unknown or insufficiently explored. So if we look at the example in the very first sentence, we see language that is precise and narrow in content in terms like patient perpetrated mental health workers. And then we see the latter term is further clarified as that is a broad group to inpatient clinicians. Now, when I say that this language is precise, what I mean is that it's easy to understand exactly which types of categories of people are of interest here, inpatient clinicians. Also, it's easy to recognize the exact type of behavior that is of interest patient perpetrated violence. It might also be helpful for you to consider how this might be phrased in ways that are unclear. So imagine that this section of the problem statement instead talked about the need to learn more about behavior of people with mental health disorders as exhibited towards clinicians. This would leave you wondering what types of behavior, which clinicians, in what type of setting. The precision in terminology here is complemented by the narrowness of focus, specifying your interest in violence as perpetrated by patients towards clinicians in inpatient settings makes it clear to the reader what type of behavior is of interest. It also reveals specific types of people you are focusing on with regard to this behavior. This is what it means to develop clarity within your research gap. 
That leads into the second main quality of a good research gap that is current. You need to establish that your topic has not been sufficiently addressed by existing research. Not research from 10 years ago, but research from right about now, or as close as you can get. In other words, this is currently a topic that deserves further research, and you're able to cite a good number of studies in your full problem statement. For instance, 10 is a good goal to support this statement. So turning back to the example, we see this again in the very first sentence, which cites multiple scholarly sources to support this claim, all of which have been published in the last five years. So let's check them out. Here we have sources from 2016, 2015 and 2014. It's perfectly fine if the topic has been of interest in the research literature for many years. But what's important is to demonstrate that your own particular angle on the issue is something that is considered a current priority. So let's consider again a scenario where the research gap was not of current concern. Maybe you're concerned about the high frequency of assaultive behaviour perpetrated by patients against inpatient clinicians. Now let's say you find a lack of current research related to the use of aversive therapies to treat such behavioural disorders in patients. You might find justification to investigate this type of behaviour in these particular settings. But arguing for a focus on aversive therapies would be an uphill battle because these types of therapies are largely considered inhumane these days and are often banned. So your argument in favour of such a study based on a lack of recent research on these approaches would not really constitute support for a current research gap. This brings me to a vital point you must understand about the research gap. It is that a simple lack of research on a topic does not equate with a solid research gap. Our dissertation consultants help so many novice researchers to address this issue, and it's an important point to understand. A simple lack of recent research might mean that the topic is no longer of current relevance, or that there is no demonstrable need for study of the topic. Now this is a big pitfall many of our clients make in developing their research gaps. Indeed, we often shape our dissertation help around getting this hugely important step of the process just right. But before you can move on with writing and editing subsequent elements of your dissertation, it's really important that you have a solid gap. Now finally, moving on to the third essential attribute of your research gap, you need to be able to give a compelling reason why this topic should be studied. Perhaps you don't have a unicorn, <laughs> but it will be difficult to prove that this is a problem for society as a whole. You might find this hole in your life deeply distressing. However, it would be a challenge indeed to demonstrate that this topic has widespread implications for your field, for your participants and for your society. OK, so let's carry this examination of what makes your research gap compelling back to our example. The final segment of the problem statement reads, mental health clinicians are still made victims and troublingly, victimization leads to the same physical and emotional effects for this group as for the general population. What makes this so compelling? Well, you have already explained earlier in the problem statement that the majority of inpatient clinicians experience violent behavior as perpetrated by patients. Now, you are clarifying that although these clinicians are professionals, they're still human beings who are deeply affected by their experiences of victimization. They are physically harmed and might develop troubling psychological reactions as the result of being victimized on the job. This is clearly a problem worth paying attention to, as this problem is likely to continue without more informed intervention to prevent or respond to violent behavior in patients. A huge part of topic development, then, is identifying the initial gap in the research that your specific study will address. And check out our video on problem statements for more on that as well. 
Identifying and substantiating a research gap can be a very difficult task for a novice researcher to accomplish, which is why we're called upon to provide dissertation help to develop a sound research gap quite often. Now, if you find that you're also having difficulty with this important step in developing your topic, then give us a call or send us an email to discuss the assistance that we can offer. I'll just note also that we have special experience when it comes to the major online universities. We're experts with the guidelines for each, so we'd love to share our insights with you. This is especially the case for topic development supporting qualitative research studies. We're unique among data analytics companies that also specialise in providing comprehensive assistance with qualitative studies from initial development and methodology to qualitative analysis and results. Now, moving forward, once you have a research gap that is clear, current and compelling, you can then start to frame the other key elements of your study. I like to think of this stage as developing the blueprint for your study, all of which must be aligned and make sure you see our video on alignment for how to draw this blueprint clearly. Now, if the foundation is solid, it's easy to continue to build on it as you develop your full dissertation chapters. This solid connection between the core elements of your study is what is referred to as alignment. You should definitely check out our video on alignment for more on this. In working on our blueprint, or developing alignment, it's helpful to focus on the core foundational elements, like the walls of a house, and then the supporting structure. So here, the foundational elements are the significance of your study, your specific research questions and hypotheses, the problem that motivates your study, which we've already talked about, and the theoretical framework that guides your research. Now, as I describe in the alignment video, all of these next key features of your study need to flow logically from your research gap as explained in your problem statement. So that's always the first thing. It's also really important to use consistent language throughout the different segments of this blueprint. Actually, we often hear that reviewers deny approval at this early stage, citing a need for dissertation editing, when really what is missing is alignment. So let's consider our example study here to illustrate. For the purpose statement, you would need to retain your focus on the use of risk assessment in inpatient settings as a means of reducing violence as exhibited by patients. If you were to go off with a purpose that focused on inpatient clinicians' beliefs about medication use to control patient behaviour, that wouldn't really be aligned with your problem now, would it? Again, the alignment video provides much more information about how to achieve this correspondence between these different components of your study blueprint. And I hope you'll give that a look. All right, now once the blueprint structure is in place, you have written a well-aligned purpose statement, theoretical framework, and research questions to go with your problem statement. Then you can completely develop the nature of the study, the significance of the study, and then if you want, you can start adding those key details that make a house a home. Throw in some stairs, a shower, the kitchen sink, if you will. <laughs> now, in other words, you can then move forward with an initial overview of background literature, data collection, instrumentation, and your analysis plan. Since eventually you'll have to carry out a study that addresses the research gap, you'll also need to ensure that you can gain access to just the right data and with an idea of how you'll accomplish that. As you can see, many elements of your study must emerge logically from the methodological approach you select. This is why we recommend clarifying your methodological approach early in the process. You'll see that it's the floor of our little house. Now, without a clear and well-reasoned choice of methodological approach, all of the subsequent work that you do to develop the purpose, our cues, and data collection plans might turn out to be a poor fit for your study. Now, of course, your methodological plans have implications for how you shape the research gap and broader problem statement. So while developing your research gap is the first major step in topic development, it's good to have a basic understanding of what types of problems can be suitably examined through qualitative research and analysis versus quantitative studies that employ statistical analysis. 
Going back to our example to illustrate the different applications of these research methods, let's now imagine that you want to examine how use of risk assessment is furthered or hindered in inpatient settings. If you're interested in exploring administrators' opinions on the factors that influence or discourage the use of these assessments, approaching the study from a qualitative angle would be best. In this case, you'd need to set up a research gap so that it leads to a statement about the lack of knowledge about administrators' perceptions of the barriers and facilitators of risk assessment. Now, let's imagine instead that you want to establish statistically supported knowledge about a variety of concretely measurable factors that are associated with risk assessment use in inpatient settings. In this case, you wouldn't want to use a problem statement that emphasises lack of knowledge about administrator perceptions, but that instead emphasises a lack of knowledge about administrative or environmental factors that are correlated with risk assessment use. Now, in this situation, you could probably start with an interest in risk assessment related to violence perpetrated against inpatient clinicians and develop a qualitative or quantitative study. However, there are certain topics that have been extremely well studied and wouldn't make an arguably important qualitative study. Similarly, if you are interested in examining a topic where no survey instruments have been developed and validated, you'll have a very difficult time moving forward with a quantitative study. Now, sometimes we find that masters or doctoral candidates invest heavily in a particular research design, spending countless hours on writing and even polishing their work through APA editing. Then they learn after a huge amount of work that it doesn't align with the problem and research gap that they have spent so many hours developing. If you'd like some help to develop your methodological approach for your dissertation so that it meshes with your overall research aims, then please give us a call or send us an email. Consulting with one of our methodologists will surely help you plan for your dissertation mindfully and help you determine the best fit for your study given your interests, training and capacities for participant sampling. Our assistance will definitely save you some time and effort on your dissertation by helping you to steer clear of common pitfalls associated with the rather complex process of topic development. And when your reviewers have feedback for you, we'll help you to revise. When we assist with projects, we actually include these at no additional charge, all the way through to final approval. So if you're planning a qualitative study and are having problems with developing any part of your topic, or if you're working on a quantitative or mixed method study, or even if you're just not sure, we can definitely help you out. We provide unlimited revisions to our work with no extra charge, as needed to obtain approval for your work. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.